All right, so test number two is going to be the cold weather test. And what we're going to do here is we're going to have all the four guns assembled. They're going to be placed in a Rubbermaid tub. Um, the tub is going to have a layer of snow on the bottom of it. The four guns are going to go in. A layer of snow is going to go on top of it. And they're going to be left outside for 24 hours. And it's going to be, I believe, minus 26 tonight. Um, maybe the 24 to 28. Uh, but it's going to be cold. And then tomorrow is supposed to be the same. Uh, minus 24 to 26. And I'll take them out to the range. And we will try to, well, we'll, we'll try to put a, a box through each one. Another a box of 50 through each one. And we'll see how they cycle. Uh, test number two, addendum. Um, my concern um, for the three rifles is this. Um, the little Badger, I've got no concerns about. It's pretty much all metal. It's over the Pictina rails and the sight. Um, the sight is the only thing I'm concerned about because it is plastic. The uh, third cap, <laughs> I've already lost that, so that's not a big concern. That's the only thing I'm worried about on this rifle with the cold weather test. It's going to cycle fine. I'm positive because it's a single shot. The Ruger, synthetic stock, um, but all the mechanics are metal on metal, so the cold should not affect those at all. If we see any problems with it, it'll be with the stock, but I don't foresee any problems with the synthetic stock. Martin Papoose, same deal. All the mechanics are metal, um, so everything working will be metal on metal. I don't foresee any problems with that. Uh, again, same problem with the, the, the 1022. It will be the synthetic stock, um, but again, nothing of that uh, should be nothing to worry about for tomorrow. Um, the, the AR-7 is the one I am a little concerned about because the barrel is plastic jacketed. The entire barrel is plastic jacketed, the front sight is plastic, and of course the stock is hollow plastic. That's the one I'm concerned about with the cold weather test. And uh, <laughs> we'll see how it goes, and I guess we'll maybe get to see how the warranty process is with uh, Henry. <laughs> All right. We'll find a more later. All right. All four. There's a uh, about an eight inch layer of uh, or six inch layer of snow down there. All four rifles are in. And now I'll fill it up with snow, and we shall start the cold weather test. There we go. Cold. Guns are buried. I'm gonna go and uh, put the lid on it. <laughs> I got some. Actually, believe it or not, I drilled it and put some locks on it as well. And I will put it in the shed for the night. Nice and secure in the lock shed. In the lock right my tub, full of snow. Man, this feels stupid. <laughs> ah, shit. The next day, it's cold as hell out. There's the guns, still in the tub, in the back of the truck. We're heading out. Okay, we're here. The sand pit extraordinaire. Costa de sand pit. There's the uh, rubbery tub with the guns. Fresh out of the back of the truck. It is a balmy, I believe, minus 24, 26. I just checked the the weather app, and uh, I saw it carrying the wind chill. And I didn't think there'd be any wind down in here in the sand pit, but there is. So, uh, was it minus 24, 26 plus the wind chill? So we're, I don't know, minus 31, minus 32. Not a very big wind, just a bit of a breeze. But it cuts. It cuts like a knife. All right. Oh, man. Yeah, this is freaking cold. Oh. Eh. Interesting. The little badger has a hell of a lot more snow and stuff on it than the uh, 
than the other ones seem to. Okay, I'm going to pop out the mags that I was so smart to leave in there <laughs> and fill them and then I'll start the video again once they're filled. And I'll give the guns a quick brush off with, just with my, my gloved hand just to get the, uh, some of this excess snow off. Oh. Triggers look a little iced up on all of them actually. <laughs> All right, I'll give them a quick brush off with the uh, glove, pop the mags out and load them up. Okay, cold test. All right, mags are out and loaded. Uh, two interesting things, well, three. Well, actually, more, maybe more than that. Okay, anyway, the AR-7, the firing pin, or the, the charging handle, because you can uh, push it in for stowing and out for using, was frozen in. It, it came out right away, but it took a bit of prying and heating with my hand to get it out. Uh, the mag was also hard to get out because the mag release is here in the front of the trigger guard. It was pretty gummy. It came out though. Uh, I could not get the spare mag out of the back because that wouldn't come off. Um, the cold has made it brittle, and I'm sure it would come off if I smacked it on the tailgate, but then I would be having to buy a new butt pad. So I've opted to leave the spare mag in there. So that was interesting. Uh, if you had the whole gun in the back, of course, you would have to smash it off to get it back there. You know what? I'm sure it would come off. You know, throw it in the armpit for five minutes, it would, it would come off. Um, the Marlin Papoose. Uh, everything is moving slow on all these guns. Let's just put it at that. The mag release was kind of gummed up. Uh, mag did come out finally. Um, cycled the gun just by hand. It worked good. Uh, the Ruger, uh, out of all of them, was the boggiest. I'm assuming their oil that they ship them in um, is very thin and uh, not made for cold weather, but it is moving, albeit a little slower than usual. Uh, the one that surprised me is the Chiapa. Um, I had to spend a couple minutes banging this off. You can still see there's ice around the breech face there. There's ice in the hinge. I could not crack the gun open and the hammer would not stay locked back. Um, because it's all metal, I'm assuming it froze all uh, harder than the other ones did. Uh, and because it's a crack open, so um, it is working now. It took me a bit. I had to uh, just get all the ice off it and uh, and you know function it a couple times, but it seems like it's working now. All right, let's give this a whirl, shall we? Marlin Papoose. That was what I was talking about, about the uh, bolt not going all the way forward. Just needs a little nudge. All right, hang on here. Got to figure out a way to grab this and shoot at the same time. Okay, let's try this. Okay, failure. Put the camera here somewhere. A little hard to do one-handed. All right, let's try this. All right, so it grabbed the next round and fed it. It just didn't. Uh, Again, it grabbed the next round. It just didn't uh, caught the. Whew. Well, might actually get it going now. Gunpowder warms up everything. Uh, there, let's try that there. <sighs> there we go. All right, started at first, but now she's running. Still cold. 
Woo. All right. Next one. Got to try the Ruger. Using the BX 25 by 2. They are pinned. They came like that. I didn't pin it myself. Ten rounds, no failures. Ten rounds, no failures. Oh. This is the stock mag that was in it overnight. Let's try that one. Failure. Might just be a dead round. Nine rounds. And it's actually running nice and smooth now. A uh, round that didn't go off. No, oh, that's got a full primary strike to it. We're going to call that a dead round. I don't know if you can see that there or not. I'll put it on the side of the truck here. We'll look at it here in a sec when we're done. Holy frick, my finger's cold. Okay. AR7. This is the one I was most concerned about. Alright. Failure. Failure to eject. Failure to eject. Seems like it's running better now that it's got some heat going through it. Alright, Chiapa. Little Badger. Now we're going to be cautious of this one because, like I said, the hammer wasn't staying where it should have been. That's a uh, that one that failed in the uh, AR7, that's this one here. Alright. It took two hits and we got it. Gonna we'll try that one from the Ruger. That was a failure to to go. There we go. No, it hit it in almost the exact same spot. I'm going to keep that one. We'll look at it later under the light. Put a couple of rounds through the little badger here now that she's warming up some. As you guys can tell, I'm not doing accuracy testing here. This is just strictly function. Strictly a function test. Well, I'd say that worked good. All right, gonna take a break and reload. Gonna reload the uh, AR7 and the Papoose, uh, the Chiaffa. I don't think we need to worry about it anymore. We put a good amount through that. The Ruger had 30 through it already, so that's good. So I'll just reload the Papoose and the uh, AR7. We're running uh, a couple of mags for each more of those. The AR7. Little half mag. It is gummy. All right. Didn't eject all the way. So once it gets like a round or two out of it, it seems to purr a bit better. 
Okay. Merlin Papoose. Put three rounds in each mag because my fingertips are freezing. Good show. All the guns seem to be running a little bit better now that they're warming up a bit. Bingo, bango, bongo. Alright. I'm going to take a bit of a break in the truck and reload some mags. We'll give her one more right. go. Just a quick review, curbside review while I'm still here. Yeah, it's cold. <laughs> I would never be out shooting in this weather if, unless I had to. It is bloody cold on the fingers, even with gloves on. Uh, so, uh, the Ruger, while it felt more gummed up than the rest of them, ran flawlessly. Uh, the Marlin had a couple of hiccups. Um, I'll have to look at that. But still, it ran. Um, a couple of failures and stuff, but I think that's more so oil. The uh, AR-7 ran, a couple hiccups as well. Um, it, uh, I'm surprised that one made it through the cold because of all the plastic. I'm quite impressed too that it made it through the cold. And then the uh, Chiapa, that one surprised me how badly it was iced up and how it wasn't functional when I first took it out. All the other ones functioned off the bat, albeit a little slow sometimes, but that Chiapa, no, it didn't. It was, I had to chip the ice out of it and heat it up with my hands to get it functioning again. So I uh, I think I'm going to go home and give everything a treat with G96, tear them all down tonight and have a look at the insides and and, uh, and give them that protective coating for the cold weather and then I might come out and do this again tomorrow because it's supposed to be the same weather again. And this is day number two. Just getting out of the truck because there is a extreme weather warning in effect today due to cold, which is perfect for what we're doing today. So what we've done is we've once again put the 22s outside overnight, a solid 24 hours. And uh, this time a little bit different. This time they were all taken down fully beforehand. And I cleaned them all with G96, sprayed them down, cleaned them up, right down every last spring and screw, put them all back together again. They sat in my shop for two days, seasoning, airing out, I guess. Then I put them in a plastic bag, threw them outside, covered them in snow, let them sit there for 24 hours, grabbed the bag, threw it in the back of the truck, drove out here, and here we are. So, it is a little bit different. The guns have now been cleaned with G96, which should make them run good. Um, the only difference is, is that I didn't bury them in the snow because, let's be honest, I didn't feel like taking them all down again and having to get every last bit of water out of them. So, um, they're cold. They're icebox cold. They, don't, they won't get any colder. Minus 28 out right now <sighs> with a wind chill of minus 36. Uh, I don't feel any wind right here. So I'm going to guess that we're about probably minus 30. It doesn't get colder than that for for Canada. Well, it does. Minus 40, minus 50. But we'll take what we can get. So, we're back out. I've loaded all the mags up. I'm going to put two mags for each one. Two mags through the 1022. Two mags through the Papoose. Two mags through the U.S. Survival Rifle. But this is funny. Somewhere between the house and the truck, I lost one of the mags. And I cannot find it. I'm assuming it's laying in the garage beside the truck, where the truck parks, I'm hoping, because I can't find it here anywhere. And then we'll do a bunch of uh, single shots through the, uh, the little badger. All right. Let's get this done. Pitter patter. Let's get at her. First up, Ruger. I will say that with them being G96, the actions are running nice and smooth out here in the cold. Whereas before, they were obviously. Uh, Obviously, uh, not running quite as smooth as they are now. All right, time to blaze. I'm kind of trinking my hands back here so we can see the action current. Mag one. 
flawless. Make two. Make two. Flawless. All right. Papoose. Again. The bolt running so smooth. Now well, it's actually got some winter lubrication on it. All right, part of the papoose bag one. Bag one, flawless. Bag two. Primer did strike. Primer did strike that one. It's got a got a dent in it. So that first one. Yeah. It's got a light primer streak in it. Let's try it again. Put it back in the mag. Whoop, that's the rooter. <laughs> that won't work. What is that? Papoose. There we go. Alright, one little glitch on the second mag. <laughs> Hands getting cold. Alright, glove, glove, glove. Alright, US or Henry US survival rifle. Mag one. Let's see if gun. Oh yeah. Okay. Failure to uh Little Badger. Round one, or load one. I will say that uh, the litter, Little Badger definitely has a big improvement with the Junior A6 because when I took it out last time, oh, the hammer was uh, was not grabbing, the sear and the hammer weren't connecting, and today, obviously, no problems with the connection. Yeah, it's uh, remarkable what proper weather oil will do for a firearm that ships out of the states. All right, I'm gonna reload this mag for the uh, U.S. survival rifle, the Henry U.S. survival rifle, one more time. But you can tell it's getting cold when I can, jaw starts getting cold, can't talk clearly. Should have worn a belly club instead of a tink today, I guess. Oh man, nothing worse than dealing with, dealing with brass rounds in minus 30 weather. Only takes a second or so for your fingers to totally lose feeling. All right. Second mag with the Henry survival rifle. Yeah, that one had a... Well, I've said it before. Alright, so the Henry's got a little bit of problems towards the end of the mag, both times. Kind of strange. I got an extra round here. We'll throw in the old little badger. 
I'll say one thing, my uh, my hip shooting's getting really good. After doing this test twice. Well, there we go. <sighs> Whoop. There we go. All right, so curbside debrief. What did we find? We found the Ruger ran flawless. We found the Papoose uh, almost flawless, just a one little hiccup, one light strike on the second mag. Now again, I was having problems with full mags using the slide drop where it wasn't going fully forward and I'm, I'm, I'm going to bet when I look back at the video, that's probably what happened. Uh, the So otherwise flawless. So those two, uh, really good. The Ruger 100%. The Papoosh, say 95%. The U.S. Survival Rifle, two failures, both at the end of the mags. Um, a pretty, pretty major failures too. The, uh, you know, not spinning out the uh, the spent round, not picking up the the next round, and then when you go to clear it, it drops the other round into the snow. So you're essentially messing up the ejected round and the next two falling rounds. So I consider that to be fairly major when you're out of a survival situation because you're. Uh, your gun's not working, and you're potentially losing two rounds. So, not good stuff. Uh, the little badger working a lot better now that we've uh, we've oiled that bad boy up. So, what's the takeaway from this? Uh, proper gun oil for the proper weather, essential. Um, the Ruger is the same. It didn't improve or, or decrease any, um, but it is definitely a lot easier to cycle this gun in the cold. The uh, Papoosh, uh, a little bit better than it did before. Here, while we're talking, let's do this. The Papoosh, a little bit better than before. Oh, man. The U.S. Survival Rifle. <laughs> oh, will that come apart? No, it won't either. Huh. I didn't even think about doing that. After sitting outside all night, the rifle does not want to come apart. The uh, papoose and the, uh, the U.S. Survival will, because they're just started on barrels. Couldn't see that. Yeah. Well, that's loose. I guess uh, in hindsight, I didn't use the wrench to tighten that. Yeah, that one comes off too. So those two are coming off easily enough. This one you don't need to take off. So that I guess that is the one detraction. The Ruger does not want to come apart in minus 30 weather. I can see the pin is not fully, uh, I don't know, the pin is fully coming back. No, I'm not going to force it. Okay, so there we go. Now we've, 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 we have found a flaw in the Ruger. Uh, in super cold weather, uh, it doesn't want to come apart. Well, it's better than not going together, I guess. There we go. That's the end of uh, the cold weather test. This has been test day two. Beautiful, beautiful Canadian winter day. Minus 30 some odd and not a cloud in the sky. I'm, uh, I'm gonna go get myself a hot chocolate and go and uh, pat myself on the back for another mission accomplished. <sighs> and then I'll try and dig my balls out because they're probably halfway to my liver. Because it's so cool. Okay, just a little bit of an addendum to the test too. I, uh, Sorry, let me turn the music down here. Uh, yeah, I was just back here at home, putting the stuff away, and uh, I was looking at the Ruger, and I couldn't get it to open up still, even now it's, that it's warm. And uh, I'll be the first to admit when I do something wrong, and wow, what a foolish error. I was couldn't get it to open up. And then I realized that with the Ruger, you have to have the bolt locked back in order to disassemble the gun. So it wasn't that the gun was frozen or cold, it was that the bolt was forward and not allowing it to undo. In fact, had I RTFM read the manual, lock the bolt back before you disassemble. <laughs>